After going over some of the previous episodes of critiquing my subscribers' designs, I've realized that there really should be a one-size-fits-all course. Ideally, from a professional designer with over 30 years of experience at the highest level. Now, wouldn't that be exciting? And today's gutsy submission comes from 23-year-old Anna Mary, who's an aspiring car designer. Also, she's a woman, which is kind of incredible if you think about it, because I think over the last couple of years, we've only had one other submission from a lady. When I do receive a, a design uh, from a lady, I think it's a pretty special moment that we have to celebrate. So I'm going to break this design review down into three distinct phases. The first one being the conceptual phase or the ideation phase. The second one being the feasibility stage. And the third one being the actual sketching phase, the style of sketching that she's using. So what I would suggest is when you do start with your conceptualization, with your, your ballpoint pen uh, to paper uh, development, is to just start coming up with a few ideas of wheel bases, perhaps, just starting to develop a silhouette, perhaps, and jumping straight into a three-quarter front view is perhaps a little bit too much, too quick, too fast. So generally what you want to do with a sheet of paper as you're starting to sketch is just start to develop, like I said, wheel bases that can sort of give you the perception of, of either a sports car, uh, a small city car, a larger car, a sedan, a crossover, an SUV or whatever. But just start slowly, you know, just getting some shapes in, just roughing it in. No mistakes are made at this stage here. So what you should probably do by the end of this, say rough and dirty type sketching is have something on paper that kind of dictates to you the overall look of the car in as many views as you can do. So kind of hard at the beginning because it's kind of like drawing a face from uh, a myriad of different angles and that face needs to look like it belongs to the same person from these angles. So that is something that you do need to practice and it does take quite a bit of it to hold in and try to, and, and to, try to get that to be uh, one look. So what Anna Mary has done here is probably done hopefully pages, say five different pages full of these very small, very quick, rough thumbnail sketches. And perhaps she's already chosen at that point one strong theme. We as designers don't typically like to just have a car in front of us and draw it. We have to imagine that car. We have to have an idea in our head that we ourselves can see. Obviously nobody else sees it, but we take that idea and we put it onto paper now, in terms of perspective, you always want to get that right at the beginning. You want to get the line drawing, as we call it, really well set up so that the car doesn't look like it's been in an accident or twisted or out of proportion or out of perspective. If you don't get the basic line drawing set up correct, it doesn't matter what you do later, the car is just going to look wrong. So get the proportions right, get the line drawing set up properly. And then the easy part is when you start to render it. So make a lot of effort, spend a lot of time on trying to get the uh, perspective drawing as accurate as you can possibly do it. A lot of the tricks, for example, of getting it accurate are to shock your mind by turning it um, in such a way that you can look at it in reverse, which means either holding it up to a mirror and looking at it in 180 degrees, uh, twisted or flipped, in other words, so that you can see what it looks like if it was reversed, mirror imaged, that can help you quite a bit. Sometimes even turning the, the drawing upside down can give you a kind of instant feel that you're looking at something fresh and new. You can double check the perspective that way, but I prefer the, the mirror technique sometimes, most of the time. For more sketching wizardry, secret hacks and design tips, go and check out our new Sketch with Frank course. We take you from basic line drawing to a full 3D perspective across eight hours of intricate masterclasses. Go and have a look swf.frankstephenson.com Having said all that, Anna Marie's drawing to start with is lined up properly. She's done a very good job of aligning the drawing in a view that we typically use as designers, three-quarter front. 
and she's got it right. At a young age of 23, I don't think I was that advanced yet. So obviously a sports car, she's done that extremely clearly. You can see that it has a lot of elements that you would find in a sports car. For example, the front end splitter going across like that. There's a lot of airflow going in through the uh, lower area of the, of the bumper area. You can see it flows through the car very much like um, <clears throat> present day Valkyrie or many cars that are pushing the limits of aerodynamics. You can see that she's probably interested in, in, in racing because these types of designs are showing a lot of uh, thinking of what happens underneath the car in terms of airflow. So she's got that going on. I think she has a snorkel. I think, Anna Marie, you've placed a snorkel right there in that area. You've kept a very wide, very raked windscreen, which means it's probably uh, geared or, or set up for speed. So you're having a very fluid shape, very, uh, let's say, a very sleek design. And as you come back, you're controlling airflow around the wing in the rear. It's a bit of an old style wing, perhaps. Uh, nowadays, when we get to this perhaps hypercar segment, which this looks like it could be in, we would probably have on a vehicle like this what we call active aerodynamics. But you're thinking about uh, the design in such a way that it illustrates that it is a very high high level sports car or even a hyper car so good for you on that let's not worry yet about if it works or not works but in general this looks like a very light uh very very futuristic car there are a few things i can really start to notice kind of immediately are sort of a pagani s maybe even a, a mclaren p1 with events here maybe even uh sort of a ferrari s nose cone coming through here now what you probably have gone a little bit too extreme on is what we call the camber and on your wheels here when you put the wheels out like that it's uh correct in perspective what you've done what you've shown here but it's a bit too extreme i mean this is uh tuning material here you have cars that actually do that and you don't want to drive them too long or too far or too fast but it's the look i can understand that in general, if you did do something like that, where you did give that that caster or that camber outlook to the wheels like that, you would probably be looking at something that, if it was built, it's probably going to be a, a show vehicle or a concept vehicle, maybe a sci-fi type uh, vehicle built for cinema or something or for a short period of time. But that is in production way more, I think, than you would ever be allowed to do. Plus, you have to remember that wheels do have what we call jowl. In other words, you hit a bump, <clears throat> that wheel has to move a little bit. And you don't have really a lot of room here for that wheel to move up and down. And if you consider that you're turning at the same time and you hit a bump, you'll do a bit of damage to the uh, body of work there. So you always want to have a certain amount of wheel travel that uh, allows you to turn uh, at speed or whatever and hit a bump and still, still get out of that situation there. I think you've got a shape going on here that if I drew it inside of you, I'd probably understand it pretty well. Now, the only thing I would say here is if you're drawing it like this, Anna Marie, and doing very dark areas like that, like you see here, here, and here, and even in this area here, a lot of designers tend, or I notice that they're starting to do uh, a lot of renderings and drawings where they go so dark in certain areas that you cannot, from a design point of view, see what's going on. You cannot understand what the shape, what the surfacing, what the details are doing in those very, very dark areas. And as a designer, what you want to do is communicate clearly what your intent is. You're not trying to hide it. Only you know what's going on in that case. So what you want to do is be able to use your drawing to communicate the idea clearly and, and uh, succinctly. And when you go so dark like that, it's a mystery. And so you're not really communicating to the modeler, to the 3D modeler, be it CAD or be it um, a clay modeler. You're not communicating clearly enough what your design intent is. So I would always avoid going too dark in areas that are critical in the design. So avoid going so dark that nobody except you knows what's going on in these areas. This area here, like I said, I wasn't sure if it's a snorkel or not. Maybe it is, maybe you're bringing air into there, but I couldn't really tell you 100%. You have achieved something that looks extremely light, extreme, extreme shape, uh, an extreme shape developed by making the car performance uh, oriented. What I would love to see as well is what the car looks like 
from its rear three quarters, and that can be a whole other ball game. Although what you tried to do, Anna Marie, is to try to make the car speak the same language from the front three quarter, as well as from the side, as well as from the rear three quarter. A lot of cars make that mistake where it looks like a few different people were working and maybe they weren't really that communicative and the car has sort of a, a mixed reading. You have one language on the side, one language in the front, and one language on the rear. That never works out, never works out. So try to keep it homogenous in terms of design language. In terms of making the car look a little bit more realistic on the paper, a little bit more 3D, we oftentimes we put a background, and this is so simple, but it's quite effective. And if you're just going to put the car on a piece of paper like that, that's fine. You're talking about speed sometimes, about delivering a sketch quickly to the engineer or to the modeling team. But if you want to show the interior of the car that it's actually there, instead of a, say, a um, opaque white screen like that, you just simply, you know, you put in something. It doesn't have to be anything. It can be a block. It can be a building. It can be a tree or whatever. You probably have an A-pillar around here, and that A-pillar is going to have material on it, thickness on it. So you would typically have that A-pillar dark, as you're looking through the glass and you'll still be able to see it. You have probably a bit of the dashboard through here. And say your reflection of, of whatever is coming to, it can be anywhere. It can be to the middle of the windscreen. It can be before the middle of the windscreen. It can come all the way over. But you want to have something that is a reflection on the windscreen itself. And that would allow you to see it if you're looking through the car. So if this was, for example, a very dark, object behind the car just say it's a square building or whatever like that then you would see it through the glass but a lot fainter because you're talking about something that's a bit uh is there but not there you look through the glass it's perhaps tinted glass so it's not going to be as sharply in focus as what you actually see if you're not looking at it through glass so you imagine that and then you have your A pillar come through here. Your A pillar would be darker where you have the reflection falling on it than here. If I pulled that reflection further across, say over to here, you might even start to see the top of the headrest of the passenger or the driver, whoever side that is on. And so you can darken that as well slightly. The reflection is allowing you to look through the glass and see the headrest, uh, say the uh, top edge of the A pillar and the background that uh, is over here. Let me darken this up a little bit more. And then you can start to see how this is actually gonna be showing through the glass. And perhaps, you know, you might have that background also coming through here a little bit. So you start to actually feel like the car is on top of the background and it's coming towards you. Little tricks like that, that you will learn eventually as you go through. In general, um, again, feasibility is a good one because I don't know when this car is going to be coming out. If this was a car for 2035, 2040, generally uh, it could be made, of course. Uh, we, we make the impossible, or engineers oftentimes can make the impossible possible. And just again, remember that if it's a brand new car like that, scheduled for another 10 years in advance, get rid of mirrors, get rid of things that are sort of added on to the car. And I think in general, as we progress into the future, you won't have so many elements put onto the car. The car will be active. In other words, wings will be able to, or the body of the car will be able to transform itself during uh, higher or lower speeds uh, as needed. So you will have different, you'll be able to have different shapes that correspond to different speeds. So make sure that I can tell your car is Italian, by the way, of course, green, white, and red for the uh, Italian flag. Um, generally, I like it. It's a very sporty car. It's a very, very futuristic car because I don't know if there are any cars in the world today that have just about zero ground clearance between the bottom of the car and the road, which means that the road you're on with this car, glass, something very, very super smooth, uh, high-speed car, very smooth surface. So this is obviously of a future era type vehicle. So congratulations, Anna Marie. Just remember that dark and light is good. You need contrast. You need to be able to see what shapes are doing. Just don't go too far on the dark side because you run the risk of hiding the design to the engineer or to the executive team or to your 3D CAD modeling team or to your modelers who are working in clay. They need to understand the sketch. The sketch is your language, your tool 
to show, to convince others what you want to achieve. I think for 23 years old, you've done an amazing sketch. It's very, very dynamic. Um, you could build this, of course, today. You could make a show car out of it. You could make a toy. You know, a lot of companies, uh, Mattel, a lot of companies make toys that uh, resemble things like this that are on the edge of being possible, but they're very conceptual. If you want to take it to be in a, a sort of productionized vehicle, okay, it's got to come back. Uh, a few years or a few, uh, maybe a few decades even perhaps. But it is a push further than what's possible today, which is what every designer should do when they start designing a car. Go further than you think you can be allowed to and then bring it back to reality. Great job, Anna Marie, and I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I certainly enjoyed it. I wish I could go into more detail, but there's always a start and an end. we got to keep it kind of short. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you again in the next episode.